So, good morning to all. Uh, this is myself, uh, Bidut Kumar Patro. I am the faculty of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. So, I have been here from 2011 and quite some time I am teaching this subject. Uh, yeah, I am really happy to again uh, offer this subject and I hope you will enjoy this subject. So, this is the ba uh, basic building blocks of computer system. We started talking in the last class. And then now we are focusing only the processor part, okay. And few more classes will be only focusing on the processor part, apart from the all other uh, uh, other uh, component or unit of the uh, computer system. So in the last class we talk about uh, few more important register here, okay. That is MAR. Sometimes this is also MAR is sometimes it is called MR. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, memory address registers, or sometimes it is called AR. Okay, so we'll say is AR or MAR, or sometimes it is called is MDR, okay, uh, or DR. Okay, so that is we gave the uh, this is the block diagram. Now we'll go move uh, next to what is the typical operation operating steps. Okay how the instruction get executed, okay. So, first is as I said earlier program reside in the memory through input devices. So, that is the basic definition of digital computer. We said ki it takes the, it accept the input uh, uh, in digitized information and then it store in the memory. And then we said ki program reside in the memory through the input device that is the first step. And then now program counter is set to point to the first instruction. In last class also I said whenever you want to, you want to execute a program, say so let us say a dot, uh, dot, dot slash a dot out. So, whenever you press it, so what will happen? Now, starting address of the program uh, that uh, starting location will be loaded with the program counter. So, that uh, that program counter value will be the starting location of the first instruction. So, program counter is set to the uh, point to the first instruction. Then content of the program counter is transferred to the MAR. What is MAR? Memory address register. The content of the program counter needs to be transferred to the memory address register. What next? Read signal is sent to the memory. Why read signal? Because as I said ki processing happened in the processing uh, processing happen in the ALU and control unit. Okay? Processing happen mostly in the ALU and control unit give the timing signal. So, therefore, what we have to do? One uh, pro, 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 uh, uh, processor should bring the information from the memory to the processor. So, this is nothing but the it will read the data from the memory to the processor. So, that is something the it should issue the read signal. Okay. So, it should issue the read signal. Next, the first instruction is read out and loaded into the MDR. There was another register is called MDR. So, that will be loaded with the first instruction. Okay. And then content of MDR are transferred to the another register is called the IR that is the instruction register. Okay. And that instruction needs to be decode. So, that is needs to be decoded. So, that is decode and execute the instruction. So, now what you do it, we will see the diagram here. We should not forget this diagram here. So, this is what program counter as I said and this is instruction register. So, first instruction will be loaded with the program counter and then program counter to MAR and MAR to the memory and then processor will set a signal, control signal to the memory that it wants to read the instruction. Okay. And then the data or instruction will be fetched from the main memory to the processor 
and there is a register it is basically uh, uh, what is called is uh, information is transferred between memory and the processor through this register is called MDR. Okay. And MDR once data is transferred it needs to be uh, understand what is about uh, not data only it is instruction what is that instruction. So, therefore, there should be a link with this IR. Okay. So, instruction register. So, now instruction register holds the instruction and it needs to be decoded with some in, uh, decoder circuit. Okay. So, then once it decodes then it, it generates the corresponding signal okay. and there should be ALU, ALU will do the performance. So, that we will see here. So, now once it is decoded, so this is the add operation or subtraction operation. So, it needs the operand and operand so let us say it is in the memory. So, therefore, we have to again the fetch the data from the main memory to the processor. So, therefore, memory to address to M again only the communicating uh, MAR it will it locates the address to the main memory. So, therefore, so MAR will be involved here and again data will be fetched uh, operand will be fetched. So, that means again read operation and again will involve with the MDR and then MDR to ALU okay. and then perform the corresponding add operation or subtraction operation in ALU. And once results is so let us say A plus B, one will got the results A plus B and results need to be stored in C. So, corresponding results will be stored in a register inside the memory and inside the memory and if you know the memory address again we have to use the MAR to store the results. So, results will be stored from MDR to the uh, memory. So, this is the typical operation of step maybe these set of step I will be repeating uh, in, 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 in few, few more classes here even two days also. Okay. Yeah. During the execution PC is incremented to the next instruction. So, once program counter is assigned program counter value is transferred to the where MAR memory address registers and then when it is fetched and while executing fetch decodes after decode okay, within this after decode while exe execution start for this instruction that time uh, that time what will happen. that time program counter is incremented to the next instruction. So, program counter hold the address of the next instruction. Okay. So, there is a concept is called interrupt. See in general what happened the program execute sequentially until or unless if you have some jump instruction. Okay. So, that is also a kind of out of sequence. Apart from that while executing a program some other device also can interrupt the currently executing program. Okay. So, therefore, normal execution of the program may be preempted if the some device required the urgent servicing. So, the normal execution of the current program must be interrupted and device raise an interrupt signal. What happened whatever executed in the current scenario current program that entire thing needs to be stored that means results or program counter value everything needs to be stored and then the interrupted service return should run. We will be seeing this one in later class maybe I will spend only one to two class you will be learning more in uh, uh, in microprocessor class about the interrupt. Okay. Now, there are many ways to connect the different part inside a computer together. A, uh, and that we will see a simple structure and then we will go more details in today's class itself uh, and then how the processor connect inside the uh, inside the uh, processor uh, different component of the processor. And this is a common term is we use a group of lines that serve as a connecting path for several devices is called the bus. Okay. So, that is address bus, data bus, control bus that is the common term we will use. So, this is one example of single bus. So, uh, we have a 
we have single bus that is connected with the all device. So, suppose uh, any, any, any processor wants to get the information, so then it will use the same bus. So, a problem with this one at a time only two components can communicate, more than two comp com components cannot communicate with this single bus structure. And if the more than two components wants to communicate, so then there should be a some arbit arbiter that will uh, 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 that will decide that which two device will uh, communicate. Okay, so uh, that is the something called single bus. We'll be uh, studying this one at the end of the uh, classes when we'll study the input output device. Okay. Now we'll talk about the speed issues. Okay. So, different device have different transfer and operating speed okay. and if the speed of the bus is bounded by the slowest device connected to it then efficiency obviously it will be low okay. and how to solve this issue that we will be seeing here. Okay. And there is one important part that is the performance okay. because whenever we talk about always you want to get the machine which, which is uh, latest that means which takes very less time to compute one task. Okay. So, therefore, the term the most important measures of a computer is how quickly it can execute the program. Okay. So, that is the main purpose of the performance analysis. Okay. Three factors affect the performance, one is hardware design, how the hardware is, another instruction set, okay. same thing or same uh, program can be uh, can use the different different instruction set okay and then compiler why compiler compiler basically generate the machine level language because most of the program we write in high level language and there will be a compiler which basically generate the machine level language so if the machine level language for the same task if the number of instruction uses by compiler is in it should be compatible actually the in having the instruction and then compiler generated machine language it should be compatible. So, therefore, these three factors are highly affected or responsible for the performance of a computer system. Okay. So, here as you see processor time to execute a program depends on the hardware involved in the execution of the individual machine instruction. So, processor time here mostly we focus that how long processor is busy for doing this operations. So, let us say I wrote a program to add two number. Okay. So, in this two number what will happen when you execute the program? So, then program will wait for, for my input and then see I am maybe much faster or maybe you are much faster than me. So, therefore, if you include this time that waiting time, so it will not be very justifiable thing, it will not be very justice to the performance of the system because it depends the time for it depends on uh, it, it is including the typing speed of the human being. So, therefore, whenever we say the processing time generally we consider the how long the processor is busy when you are giving input that time processor is not having any work. Okay. So, that is we say the processor remain in idle state. So, then processor time is basically the executive program depends on the hardware involved in the execution of the individual machine instruction. So, whenever while executing the machine instruction, whenever the processor will remain busy, so that time is only considered as the processor time, okay. not that how long I spend for giving the input. Okay. So, processor and a relatively small cache memory can be fabricated on a single indicated chip to to improve the performance. Okay, that we will study in more details how much cache memory is sufficient for running the uh, a program in much faster way without having the cache. Okay. There are different issues speed of the cache, cost and the memory management. Uh, uh, then if you have a multiple memory uh, which data should be available in cache, which is not in the main memory and so on. Okay. Now, this is one related term is something called the processor clock. There is something called clock, clock cycle and the clock rate. Okay. 
So, clock processor clock is nothing but pro entire operations every operation in the processor is controlled by timing signal that timing signal is nothing but the called the processor. So, processor circuit basically it is controlled by a timing signal and that timing signal is called the clock. Okay. The to execute an instruction, so each instruction is divided into a several steps, each of which completes in one ideally each of which should complete in a one cycle. Let us say I have a operation that is add a b. So, now what will happen this is the instruction. So, instruction it has to be first is fetch okay. and then there is a task called decode and then there is actual performance it is not that again operand fetch. Okay. And then execution. So, so, each machine instruction can be divided machine instruction can be divided entire time can be divided into small small step. So, that each sub task can be completed in a cycle. Cycle is nothing but a regular interval that is something called the cycle. Okay. So, now what is cycle per second and there is something that is something clock and the regular interval I said the regular interval regular interval is nothing but the clock period. Okay. Okay. And clock period see there is something called clock rate. Okay. As I said here there is something called the clock rate. Clock rate is nothing but the inverse of the clock period. So, we know the uh, what is called is time period. So, similarly here is something called clock period. So, clock period is inverse a clock rate, clock rate is nothing but the inverse of clock period. Okay. So, this is called clock period okay. and there is a term called cycle per second unit is called the hertz. Okay. Cycle per uh, second is called the hertz. Okay. So, therefore, clock rate r equal to 1 by p we can write where p is clock period. Okay. So, p is clock period and r it is nothing but the uh, 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 rate clock rate. Okay. Clock rate is represented this is represented basically the number of cycle in a second and this is something called the hertz. Okay. Now, if I say okay, if I say ki, uh, uh, processor frequency is let us say 1.5 gigahertz. Okay. So, processor frequency means this is gigahertz. So, this is nothing but the R clock rate. So, then what will be the time period? So, time period or clock C L O C K clock period will be 1 by R. So, 1 by R means 1 by 1.5 into 10 to the power 9 because gigahertz. So, this will give you 10 to the power minus 9 1 by 1.5 means what 3 by 2. So, 2 by 3 into nanosecond 2 by 3 means. So, it will be 0 0.66 nanosecond. Okay. So, if, if any processor is having 1.5 gigahertz that means its clock period will come 0 0.1 on 0 0.66 nanosecond. Okay. So, 6 7 nanosecond. Okay. So, now here is one basic performance equation. Let us say T the processor time required to execute a program that has been prepared in high level language. Okay. So, that is T. That now, what is that? That program have actual number of machine uh, n is the number of actual machine language instruction. So, number of instruction is n 
and as I said the each machine instruction will be divided into a number of step and each step will take only one clock cycle. Okay. So, therefore, so number of steps is s for each. So, total number of step, step will be n into s and for each step it should be complete within a cycle. So, within a cycle means within a clock period. So, if r is the clock rate then clock period will be 1 by r. So, total time will be 1 into s into 1 by r where r is the clock period. So, t is the time. Okay. So, now question how to improve t. So, that is the main target that how the program will be executed fast. Okay. So, this is the uh, whatever I said those are the uh, uh, introduction for the uh, for the computer organization or architecture class. Okay. Now, what you do it will go, go slowly so that uh, we can understand it much better way. Okay. So, now we will continue with the previous diagram that is the block diagram and we will see in more details that how that each registers uh, each register is interconnected or registers are connect interconnected one to each other. Now, we will not talk about the memory and other part. Okay. So, with that uh, I will take another 10 minutes to complete uh, today's class. Okay. So, whatever we studied here, so that is uh, a small accumulator based CPU will be studying next. So, now if I summary it here, so what is happening here? Now, CPU transfer the instruction and when necessary they are input data. Okay. So, that is uh, that is we know right, CPU transfer instruction and when necessary they are input data from main memory to the register in the CPU. Okay. CPU execute the instruction in their stored sequence except when execution sequence or execution sequence is altered explicitly. Okay. Then CPU transfer output, okay, CPU execute the instruction in their stored sequence. So, execution is done and then once is execution is done, CPU transport the output data from CPU register to the main memory. So, that I said just few minutes before in more details rather. Now, what we do it, uh, what we will do it? So, we will know this one is little more uh, elaborately. Okay. So, here we will draw the diagram. So, we will have something like one block here. Okay. We will have another block here, okay. now what we studied key we will have something called yeah, accumulator. So, we have something called one special register is called accumulator and then we obviously we will have something called ALU, this will be connected both side and ALU one portion also will be connected with that is something called data register. So, MDR. So, this results also will be transferred to MDR. What is MDR? MDR that is memory data register. Okay. So, apart from that we also talk about few more register in the last class. Okay. So, we must have this is called program counter. Okay. So, we should have something called IR that is instruction register we along with that we have another important register is called MAR 
memory address register. Okay. So, these unit will be connected with this is will be connected here, this is something called instruction decoder, it will generate some signal. Okay. This unit we can say is the program 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 what is called it is something called program control unit okay so this is something called data control unit okay so this is we are talking about uh, a small accumulator based cpu okay now now what we, we have we have also connection with the outside wall so this is uh, we can say is the memory okay or uh, yeah memory we are not considering raw with the io now what i said data needs to be fetch first is first step is program counter will be loaded with the first instruction and then MAR that is memory address register will uh, me memory register memory address register is the only connection where the processor will place the address from which location it should bring the instruction and data. So, then MAR to there should be a connection to MAR to the memory line. Okay. So, memory let us say memory is here. So, this is the memo uh, memory bus address bus. Okay. So, there should be a connection. So, along with that processor that is program counter also will be connected here because the initial starting in start instruction the start location starting location of the program was stored in program counter. So, there should be a connection with program counter to MAR. Okay. Now, once data is available in the memory, so it will be delivered to the processor and which register it should load. So, that register is nothing but MDR. So, therefore, there should be a connection with MDR. It is not only the data will come from the memory to processor, it can go also from processor to memory. So, this should be also bidirectional connection. Okay. Now, data another issue that data is here in MDR. Okay. And instruction register is there. So, after data or instruction is brought to the processor, it needs to be decoded, okay? decoded by decoder, instruction decoder and before that it should be stored in the instruction register. So, therefore, there should be a connection for MDR to IR inside the processor. Now, the entire instruction, so that is A add, add a B that is A is the location, B is the location, add is the instruction. So, everything is written in a 0 and 1. Let us say add is let us say 0 0 1, A B location may be registered. So, let us say we can put 0 0 0 0 0 0, 0 1 0 something like that. So, therefore, entire instruction in, entire instruction is now in the instruction register. So, now instruction register there is instruction decoder it will decode oh it this instruction is nothing but the add. Okay. Along with that once it realize it is add instruction so it should have the operand. So, operand is where so this location. So, again the to connection to the outside uh, that memory with the processor is there the memory uh, MAR. So, therefore, there should be a connection from MAR to sorry IR to MAR. So, there should be a connection here. Okay. So, and sometime as I said if it interrupt happen or something happens sequence can change or there if there is a jump instruction. So, it will not execute sequentially. So, therefore, again another instruction will be executed. So, therefore, and that where, where from this instruction will be executed that some it is written this location. So, therefore, there should be another link from here to 
program counter. Program counter value will change. It is not that exactly the next instruction. It is a different instruction and then location will change. And then as usual once it is changed it will go to the MAR and MAR will face the data from the memory therefore, there is unidirection and then data will be stored in the MDR, but again that instruction needs to be executed. So, there should be a connection with the IR, so instruction register. As I said again that may be a sequential, if it is a sequential so program counter is not required, but it may be it may needs the operand. Okay? So, therefore, it should be connected with the MAR. So, this is the all details of the connection and this, the, 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 this generates so different control signal. Okay? And yeah, yeah, ALU will have. So this is the so simply simplest diagram. Uh, simplest diagram here, we uh, we got it here. So you just try to understand slowly how we are moving here. So initially we talk about very simple diagram of the block diagram of the computer system, and from each block diagram now we are focusing only the processor part. Okay, next few classes we'll be focusing on the more on the processor. Okay and then we will focus on the ALU and then control unit and then we will go to the memory and so on. But please try to understand say once it get the information, information will be in the main memory and that information or instruction needs to be brought, needs to be uh, uh, needs to uh, uh, needs to bring to the uh, what is called in the processor. Okay. So, that is something called fetch state. And for this one, the program counter role is there, MAR is role is there, MDR is role there for entire execution here. Okay. So, I stop uh, with this note is this entire diagram whatever I saw, I, 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 shown, I have shown here, it is not available in the book of Hamager, but it is available in the book of P. Hayes. Okay. So, P. Hayes and then chapter is chapter 3. Okay. So, now in the next class we talk about data representation and I prefer to uh, refer the book for this one is again we will move to the uh, uh, Hamacher and the Hayes. Hayes we will we'll study little, but mostly on Hamacher we will again cover. So, with that note I stop today's class, again I will continue in the next class.